All right, Terrell, live from beautiful Ottawa, Ontario. How's it going, man? Doing well. Going well. Doing well. Uh, tomorrow. Been around wait till the last sporting event on planet Earth to start. Yes, the la- Literally, literally. I don't. I don't know if you can find another sporting event on the planet Earth, man. Right now, if you watch Sports Center, there is nothing you can literally watch, Terrell. It is like the Earth is shut down when, as far as it goes um, with uh, sporting events. So, how is preparation? Is tomorrow your competition day? Yes. Okay. So, what all weights are all weights tomorrow for men's freestyle? Yep, all all six. Okay. So, women's was today. Greco was yesterday. Yep. Are you in the gym watching? Uh, we couldn't. So the only the, the competitors and the coaching staff is allowed. So even they wouldn't even let the next day's competition warm up. So you, um, yeah, you can only you're only allowed in the gym uh, if you're competing. So tomorrow it will be you. Um, who all are you coaching tomorrow? Desi. Who are you all coaching? Just I'm I'm here just with Desi. Just but, Desi. Uh, yeah, but obviously I'm, you know, cheering on Team USA, but I'm not. I'm not on the staff. I'm just, I'm just here with Des. Ohio RTC, Amir Desi, mm-hmm. Amar Desi. Yes, sir. I like him. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's a cool, dude. Um, top two tomorrow qualifies for the Olympics, correct? Correct. Okay, and then la- Okay, so last week was the Pan Am. Um, was actually Pan Ams. This week's the Pan Am qualifier. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, dude, you got double duty right now. So you you would have been flying back. So let's let's talk about like the big news here. You would have been flying back to Columbus probably tomorrow night, and then joining the team or or Monday. When when would you have been flying back to Columbus to join the team? I probably would have fl- I would have flown back Monday morning, and then I would have left Tuesday afternoon for for NCAs. Okay. So, were you in Canada when you got the news on Thursday? Where were you? No, I was I was in Columbus. So, I came back. Um, I went for, straight from Big Tens to the first Pan Ams. Then, um, Desi wrestled. It was on a Monday. So, I got back Tuesday, did some team prep Wednesday, and then I believe it was Thursday at practice was when um R A D kind of final like finalized the or gave us a heads up on the cancellation. And so we kind of brought everyone in and told everyone in. But they you know uh they they let me they let me leave the country so yesterday. I don't know if I'll be able to get back in, but they let me come out yesterday. So Dude, what do you do? Let me back. What do you do? You go stay with Desi in B C what do you do? Because he's from British Columbia. I don't know. Right? I don't know. I mean, maybe just uh, try to hitchhike across the border. I don't know. I don't think it's going to work. You are not inconspicuous. I I want you to know that. Well, I mean, it's just groups of people, right? So it's just one one guy. One guy hitchhiking. There should be no problem, right? (laughs) I love that we are able to find light in this situation and at least have a little bit of fun with it because it's pretty terrible man like uh and listen i understand that there's worse things that happen to people like death and a death in a family like you know i was talking to colin moore today he has amazing perspective on this whole thing um i'm really impressed talking to him you obviously get that you know you've coached him for you know and been either rtc athlete or or whatever in some capacity you've seen him come in from high school to obviously through senior year coached him um that guy gets it but I think that they're all so shocked that they don't even know what to say. Because I talked to you know him and another kid, Ohio University guy, Zach Carson, today, and they're both seniors, man. They're both seniors, and and this is probably going to be it for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 weird. It's weird because, like you said, I mean, I think the biggest thing that is helping people is is the misery loves company. The fact that it's happening to everyone um is is helping people hold it together right because it's it's uh it's not just one university or one you know region that's wronged it's i mean it's a worldwide thing it's a countrywide thing so 
I think that, you know, as crappy as that is, that's people are have finding a little bit of stability and, you know, complaining about it with each other, you know, kind of just sitting and <laughs> hunkering down together and saying, talking about how it sucks. So, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm really proud of Colin, really proud of Luke, our team. You know, they've been great leaders. They've had great perspective. Obviously, it was emotional when we told them, but, you know, they've they've reeled it in. We had a team meeting on Friday kind of with logistics and moving forward with dates and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, when can you come back to school? When can you – what's what's the situation like from that front? And everyone seemed, you know, pretty – high spirited, you know, given the circumstances. So it was, it was, I was, I was proud of our team. So the Ohio state university does not sound like they're going to come back with class. They're not coming back with classes in person classes through may or whatever it is. Right. They're, they're, they're canceled. And it, it, well, if you can't do it in person, like all the lab stuff, it's just canceled. They're not doing lab classes and everything else that's been moved online is my understanding. Correct. Yep. So May 6th, I think is as of right now. So we're kind of in holding pattern till April 6th with, ev- with everything. And then that that's when we're going to discuss Olympic hopeful scenarios and uh, possibly be able to get some waivers for some guys training for the trials to get back in the room, but otherwise no, no practice, no, no mass congregation till May 6th. Okay, so David Taylor has his own facility. He has the M2 facility. Like, it's just outside of uh, State College. I don't actually know the town, but it's in Central PA, right? you know, by by State College, right? So so David Taylor has zero to worry about, right? Like, those coaches can come and train with David Taylor, whether it's Casey Cunningham, Sanderson Brothers, whoever, right? He doesn't have yep. an issue. Everybody else kind of has an issue. Um, he actually brought up... Colin brought up uh, Coach Coach Jordan. You know, Coach Jordan's facility is not too far from you guys, and he's got a couple different options, right? So, yeah. so you know, that would be, and then you know, Coach Thatcher. That was another one that that, that he talked about. And Moran, Moran has a facility as well, but he said yeah. he can't be on the campus or in the room for for the dead period, right? April fifteenth. Is that is that actually correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna. Ha- it's gonna be a little bit of a, and, and then obviously the trials are delayed, so that's, I mean, that's gonna be. It, it's gonna be a little bit of ragtag training, uh, kind of see who can see who can own their training, who cannot freak out for a couple of weeks. So it'll be, um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting, but I, I don't think it should. You know, these guys are disciplined. Most of these senior level guys, especially the guys toward the top. They're disciplined. They already own their own training. They already have their own practice structures in their heads. They come into practice with a plan. They get a lot out of their minutes. So it doesn't matter if you're standing over them, you know, or if you're, or if they're by themselves, they're going to find a mat. As long as they're with each other and they have partners, they'll, they'll rise up and like here, you know, Miles and Colin, I think will kind of latch onto each other and, and move forward. So I think it'll, It'll be all right. It'll be a little weird, but I don't think it'll be a huge step backwards. You know, and the other thing is you're pretty plugged into Team USA. You're obviously very plugged into our Olympic movement, World Championships, Pan Ams you're obviously at right now. What are you hearing on that front as far as Tokyo 2020? Have you heard any talk about Tokyo 2020? Because obviously that's the big fear is, you know, this originated in Asia um, obviously Japan, an island in Asia, right? So it's like big fear that they may cancel the Olympics. What have you heard on that front, Terval? Um, I mean, I, I've heard that they're, they're going to happen. Um, I've heard that the only real contingency plan is to possibly delay them till 2022. They couldn't really do a short delay. Uh, I think it's either a, a big delay so everyone can – can figure out scheduling and and to- totally redo it or uh, don't delay at all. So those are the two options. And I think they, they, they seem, you know, as of right now, all the communication out of there that I've heard has been, yeah, it's a go, it's a go. But, I mean, I, I don't, I, I mean, I guess at this point it's like 
things things went off the wall in 24 hours. You know, I mean, they went from no fans and they didn't even let that they didn't even let that marinate for 20 hours before they said okay, everything's canceled. So so they uh things can turn t- things can turn fast right now. So obviously um, you know, what we're hearing now is is by no mean the 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 gold standard of information. <laughs> I mean, things yeah. things are so volatile. But yeah, that's what I'm hearing right now is they're uh, they're far enough away that they're hoping that um, you know the uh, the stuff will be contained to at least to a point where they can move forward. Fluid and developing would be the words that I hear a lot, and I don't like when I hear fluid and developing. Yeah, it's it's scary. It scares me because it means, like you just said, fluid and developing means uh, anything can happen, right? Like it's like you said, off the rails. We don't even know what's going to happen. It's just it it's insanity, man. Like it it you can't even I can't even wrap my brain around it. Like like you said, how quick this happened? Not even in twenty four hours, twenty hours, right? Ohio State tournament, all the schools in Ohio. You got kids in school, right? Yeah. Are they canceled for three weeks? Yeah, yeah, they're canceled. So, yeah, man, it was, it was just crazy because I, I thought that the step they took with no fans was extremely drastic, you know, and they they didn't even give that a chance before, okay, never mind, nobody. So, and obviously I don't know a ton about the situation, but um, I think that the, the, the big piece of the puzzle that worries me is, is – you know, everyone's talking about the health and safety of of the athletes, the health and safety of the athletes. And and for professional athletes, it's not, I think it's more of a job. Of obviously, they'd love to compete, but it's year in, year out. You know, you, you compete, you go home, you compete, you get paid, whatever. But for the amateur athlete, uh, the thing that worries me is the, the, the mental health and well-being of the athlete. I think that, I mean, I would say 300, you know, maybe 300 out of those 330 qualifiers would would snap call risking getting this virus um, and still uh, over not competing, you know? I mean, I just think that it's one of these things where this is, uh, this means a lot to these guys. And, and this idea of like, no, sorry, is I mean it can. There's people from the 1980 Olympic team who are still bitter at our government. You know that that, that boycotted. Yeah. So I just think that the, the the type of the type of human you're dealing with, especially in our sport, that it just kind of wraps and weaves into your life, can really cause uh, some some mental issues, some depression, some of that stuff. So I just think that that at the speed at which they threw it away was was alarming yeah i i couldn't agree with you more i don't even know what to say like if you talk to lee camp and greg wojciechowski you know and uh any of those guys uh the the who, who was the illinois coach uh mark johnson you know i think he was one of them right russ russ, russ you talk to russ yeah you talk to these guys and it's it's obviously very damaging to those guys and those are just four guys you know off the, off the top of my head right that were but the, yeah. well, the thing about Russ is he got he had seventy six where he won a silver medal, right? I mean, so Russ at least yeah. had that, whereas Lee Kemp never got that. He won world exactly. titles, but he never got his Olympic title. Yeah, and that that's the craziest thing about it. Um, the sixth year, what have you heard from that, and, and what are you hearing about the sixth year, and what are your other coaches saying about this? Uh, I mean, just what everyone else is hearing. So I think that they're looking into it. I think that everyone sees that it's it seems it seems to be um, something that you know up front it sounds fair sounds reasonable um, they already did it I think they already did it for the spring sports now they're gonna look at the winter sports so um, obviously it's gonna be a trickle down effect it's gonna be a nightmare with scholarships and depending on how they do it now if they just go straight you know, no holds barred, which I don't think they will. But if it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. You can, you can be, you can be out of school with, with no scholarship and compete 
you know, you don't have to, to you know, if you're, if you were one of these guys affected, you totally don't have to adhere to the rules of NCAA, but obviously they're not going to do that. So it'll be, I mean, guys coming in where they fit with the scholarship money, um, you know, a lot of commitments, you know, you plug people in with this idea and a lot of your recruit is, Hey, you, you, you step in and you go, or a lot of your red shirts this year, you know, committed to you because your seniors were leaving, you know? So it's just, it's just a strange dynamic. There's going to be some conversations, but I don't think anyone's going to be mad at anyone else. It's just, uh, and the reality of some of these seniors, they're already planning their lives, you know? So, so as much as they wanted this national title, it's like, what do you, do you take random classes and put your life on hold for another year or do you go out and start making money? So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's so much to unpack when you and I talk about it. And when I talk to Colin about it, there's just so much to unpack. And so obviously you've got a, a full slate in the sense that you're going to probably keep training Desi through this. And he's got an yeah. ex- extenuating circumstance. You guys are going to figure something out whether you go to Canada or whatever you're going to do, right? I mean, obviously yeah. a lot of that. And he can, so let's just say worst case scenario tomorrow, he doesn't get in the top two, right? He was already in the top two where he forfeited to Nelson, right? So let's just yep. say he can run that result back again. Let's just say, let's say that doesn't happen. How many more chances does he have to chase this, to chase it? Just one, just one. So if he doesn't qualify here, there's a last chance. So obviously all, the only way to qualify is top two at your continental championship. So this is his. And then top two at the last chance qualifier, which already has been which already has been um, delayed. And so they're thinking that will be uh, in June. They've kicked the last chances back to June. When were they May? Uh, long- were they May or April? Uh, they were supposed to be the week after our trials. Okay, so was April. The last... they were so, going to be in like April, April, right? Yeah, they were going to be in April. We're in Uzbekistan, um, so... or where'd you where'd you have to go there? It's uh, uh where'd you have to go? Bulgaria. To, uh... Black chance was Bulgaria. Oh, but hopefully he qualified. It would work well, obviously. I mean, I mean, not just. I mean, obviously, this is more important than logistics, but logistically, if he qualified tomorrow, it would work really well because <laughs> the Olympics aren't till. August so he would actually be able to kind of chill and take his downtime until this until this well and then who knows what, if it's going to blow over but at least for right now the scheduled May 6 because I figure if he qualifies tomorrow he can go home rest until May 6 and then just pick up pick up where we left off and then he has the rest of the month of May the whole month of June, the whole month of July, you know, we're talking 10 weeks. That's plenty of time to peak for, uh, for Olympic games. So, so this actually, this schedule barring he competes well and, and qualifies tomorrow kind of takes, you know, the stress of, of not having somewhere to train for him off the table. He can, he can pretty much just, you know, kind of lift weights and run for the next month and he'll, he'll have plenty of time. What's the draw look like? Have you got your draw yet? Yeah, so his bracket's kind of nice because they're going to come down to the t- to the top two no matter what because it's a pool play. Yeah. So it's the exact same as last week. So he'll oh, that's have right. I saw, next- I saw the results. They were pool. They were pool results. That's right. Yeah. So how it works is uh, he'll have Mexico and Venezuela on his side, and then Gwizdowski is on the other side with Cuba and Puerto Rico. And so he will – they'll wrestle their pool, everyone in their pool, and then – the semifinal is a cross bracket. So the number one from pool A will wrestle the number two from pool B and then vice versa. And the winners of those will wrestle in the finals. So basically he'll have to, so, I mean, I'd imagine Gwizdowski is going to beat up that Cuban. That Cuban is a, is a Greco guy. Um, Gwizdowski, you know, has tech, the better one. The other, they didn't let the other one wrestle because he already qualified for Greco. It was a big ordeal. So it's a, it's actually their, their, the guy that Kuhn wrestled last week. Got it. Um, and so Gwazowski should beat him pretty easily, and then we'll have him in the semi. So and then and then Gwazowski will have you know probably Mexico, and then they'll have each other. So the so the plan is Mexico, Venezuela, and you know if Gwiz does the job and doesn't make any mistakes, hopefully Cuba in the semi. So that's kind of the 
the play. So the nice thing is, is yeah, the, the, the draw, it was going to happen either way. Um, they were going to whittle it down to the best two, which was, which was, took a lot of stress off because it, it wasn't one of those where you just have to avoid, you know, like hopefully they don't get on the same side kind of thing. Yeah. That was what I was thinking when I was just, when I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, if they're on the same side, then that's what, that's what I didn't like about it. When I thought about it at first, I was like, well, that's going to screw everything up. You yeah. I mean? yeah. Cause if you get in the same half, it's like you already have your final in the semi. But it yeah, doesn't exactly. do you any good because you're not qualified. Exactly. Um, okay, so um, will be the same thing as the the last week's final. Will you guys just not wrestle in the final? Um, I don't know. I mean, I saw all the women pull out. None of our women wrestled today, so I'm, I'd imagine I'd imagine either us or them. Um, I think I think as of right now, in my head, we're wrestling, yeah. but. I mean, this is already like we're 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 walking on eggshells a little bit. There's, there's, I mean, there's I guess there's local doctors like like trying to, you know, talking to staff trying to shut the tournament down. I mean, one of the Canadian coaches was telling me that like like some local doctor was was saying like how how crazy it was that we were still having this. So there's 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 people trying to. So we're we're trying to survive one more day. So so. Uh, we're just trying to get this qualification, and let's if, if and then we're we're probably gonna get the heck out of here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, you said we had twenty minutes. We're past our twenty minutes. Do you have anything else? I could talk to you all night, but I know you got stuff going on. Twenty minutes. We're past it. Does Terrell got anything else to tell people? I I I would like to see you guys in the final tomorrow. It'd make me feel a lot better about stuff. Um. I'd like to see Desi obviously qualified. That'd make me feel a lot better about stuff. He's an Oregon State yeah, Beaver. I, th- I think everyone, I mean, r- right now I think the biggest one is uh, the biggest matchup tomorrow is going to be uh, Gilman and, and Cuba. So they drew the same side. Um, so I think that's the big one because I think that kid beat Gilman two years ago, but Dayton Fix beat him last year, that Cuban, um, in a close match. So And, and I think G- Gilman – should handle him. Gilman is really good. So, uh, but that's, that's the big one. Cause, cause Zane and, and Cuba opposite sides. Um, David Taylor usually kills everybody. Dude, David Taylor. <laughs> I, I don't, if you have like a weapon, you can beat him, but I don't know how else to beat him. I know he's great. So that's gotta be, I mean, he should be, you know, obviously it's, it, there, there's a little bit of a question mark, because uh, he's coming off of injury, but I don't think he should. You know, he, I think he'll knock off the rust relatively quick. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a full match. And then Gwiz, Gwiz, same thing. Gwiz has he just has to beat this Greco Cuban, um, and then so does Amr. So I think, uh, you know, for for me in my head, I'm thinking, you know, if everyone wrestles well, obviously there's crazy stuff that can happen, but it should be a a, a pretty good day tomorrow. Barring, I think I think the biggest thing we're trying to avoid is is them saying, "All right, uh, we're going to cut this last day, and all of you guys are stuck in this country. You can't go back to your house." Please don't say these things. I, I, <laughs> you're stressing me out, and I shouldn't even be stressed out. It should be you. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, sure. hey, so I, I I go off the, the the idea that if you say it, there's less chance of it happening if you say it. Right. So, so all the, so, so most people say like, don't say that, don't say it. But, uh, I like this, uh, there's this quote that, that I think about when, when there's like scenarios of possible bad things happening is, um, the worst things in your life are the things that never cross your worried mind. So that's what I, so, so usually the things that, that are the most inconvenient and the worst things that happen in your life are things that you didn't, you, you didn't think about. They kind of surprised you, so I try to think of all the bad case scenarios and say them. So, so I, I check my boxes. <laughs> uh, the ultimate, the ultimate uh, optimist. I would like like to call you the 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 constant optimist. Hey, do you have your medal? You got your medal yet? I was just talking about you to my kids. Did you, did you get the medal no, yet? No medal, no medal. I just I saw Rich Bender today. He told me no medal yet. But I mean, but I think I think that. They're dealing with a couple of things more important than my medal right now. Yeah, so I, th- I, I think understand that, that that's there. It's I think that 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 whole that whole deal is shelved for a little bit until 
they figure out their I mean there's there's a lot of crazy stuff going on obviously so I'm trying not to push push the envelope but yeah I'm just staying in contact with those guys and seeing what the plan is all right what do you got tonight anything you gonna talk to Dante uh, at all or yeah I'll probably go go see what's up and then try to try to hit a hit a little late night workout try a little hit a late night workout so I'm still trying to rehab rehab my knee I'm coming back from ACL, so I'm about four months into six months rehab. So, trying to stay on top of you know, keeping getting my legs strong again. What do you do? What's your workout tonight? I don't know. I'm probably gonna do something crossfitty, probably like a rower to some to like some pull ups or a rower to something. Try to. So I'm just I'm kind of getting addicted to the pain of working out. So just something that hurts. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, thank you for the time. Um, uh, it's been good talking to you. I love that you did the whole interview. <laughs> interview laying down. <laughs> oh, you're the best. All right, hey, thank you. Good luck tomorrow, and uh, get it done, man. And, and enjoy the pain tonight. All right. Yeah, we'll do. All right, buddy. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, yeah, bro. Later.